Click Dork back again. And today I'm starting an exciting new series on click application automation. So don't worry, you haven't missed anything. This is the first one. I'm going to be talking today about personas. And I've got a few personas with me uh, in the studio here who are coming to join me. Hi, guys. First question for you guys is what kind of coding and development experience have you had already? What do you mean, what kind of development experience do I have? I'm not a coder. I'm a choreographer. I don't work in your daddy's IT department like writing code all day long. All I do is help the dance of data between all of our many different SaaS systems. What kind of coding experience do I have? I didn't realize this was a job interview when you told me you wanted to ask me some questions. Um... I've done a little bit of coding here, you know, here and there when I when I really needed to, um, but mainly I'm a business person. I I I, I kind of know what our workflow is and our processes are, and I and I really track those things. Yeah, that's kind of what I do. All right, you're not paying me enough to wear this. Forget it. Don't even ask me questions until I get this off. That's just that's just silly. What kind of coding experience do I have? Let me tell you. I came out of the womb and I coded my own birth. I went to my first pediatrician visit. They didn't have an EHR system, so I wrote them one. Yeah, I, I do a little bit of coding now and then. Last week, I literally resurrected the matrix by using some basic Pascal Fortran loops, go to C sharps, all that stuff. Enigma JS, Nebula JS, I did that when I was a baby. What languages do I work in? English? Languages? Um, let me think. I think when I was in that business class, I had to take that um, basic stuff. And, and I know there's been times that, that I've had to fill in for people, you know, as part of my team. And, and, I, and I've done that Culex script stuff. Um, I've seen some of that C hashtag hashtag stuff, but... I really didn't need to maintain it. I told the boss I was busy with some other things to do that day. Languages. I thought I just gave you the list of languages. Weren't you listening? Oh, variables? Yeah, I think variables is that new French after dinner wine that pairs really well with truffles. I love it. Variables. Oh, like X equals A plus B? <sighs> Yeah, I've used those when I really, really had to, but I got to be honest, I, I, I really like simple, so I want to see the expression with everything just right there in it, and substituting things and then having to go back and look at what the variable did later, that doesn't really fit my style, but you know, if, if you could teach me, I'd be happy to learn variables. Now, that's the great subject to start with, because I'm going to tell you, as an architect, I don't start with code until I've got the variables. I've got to define what my expressions are going to be so that I can reuse them over and over and over because that's called maintenance, my friends. I'm a coding dork. I only write stuff one time. What would I think of your templates? I'd love to see them because if there's a prearranged dance plan for my dancers, my data, I would love to just go ahead and take advantage of that and save myself the trouble. Templates. I think I saw a thing from that Clickdoor guy, and I, I think the template's like a pre-done workflow. I, I would love a start like that, but I got to be honest. I, I, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but I probably need to make some changes. And I heard that you've got like this low-code, no-code drag drop. That's kind of my style. But, but a start to the template, I'll take it. What do I think of your templates? Well, I think they're great for like guys in suits and, and sport shirts that go golfing afterwards. But I got to be honest, as an enterprise architect, I'm probably going to like skim over your templates to get an idea of what you're thinking of a workflow. And then I'm going to like supercharge it and put turbos in it and NOS in it and, and, and make that thing really scream. Because I got to think about our entire enterprise and how every single one of those flows works together and make sure that we've got caching and super fast performance in each of these flows. Because we've got like thousands and thousands and thousands of people, depending on my work. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, that's all funny. 
I'm not like any one of those guys, right? And I won't tell you which of those guys I'm more like than the other, um, but I'm not like any of them either. We are all somewhere in a continuum that ranges between all of these guys that might look something like this. I wanted to start out by talking about our choreographer. It's kind of a weird word, but I, I think he kind of made the points pretty clear. IT is really different today than it was when I certainly, when I started my career, right? When I started, everything literally had to be coded. There was no third party software. There was no open source that you brought in. You coded everything. And an IT person's role in a, in a tech world was to build, right? Build the solution. As we began growing, we obviously, we started having systems and we called them interfaces, right? They were very clunky. They were hard to maintain. Um, each vendor had nothing to help you. Um, they were just a proprietary vendor and you were using their software the fact that you happen to have 10 other software packages didn't really matter to any of these vendors. Nowadays, more vendors than not have a lot of stuff uh, that can be called and can be interfaced through things like an automation where all I really want to do is choreograph that dance. I've got data here. I would like to get that data over to here. Please help me, right? And since all these vendors have now done a lot to really improve that, uh, whether it's through REST or through WebSockets, all kinds of different things, doesn't really matter. It just, it enables people who are more high level focused on the data flow and not concerned about coding to get work done. They can work with flows and make sure that these things happen. These are people who might be in admins right? They don't get into the detail coding. They just make sure the stinking system is up and running for you so you can get your job done. There's other people then, our maker, um, who was kind of the guy with just a sports shirt on, he's probably at a department level, right? He cares about a department. He wants to make sure that the 10 employees or 12 employees in his group get what they need done. And they're trying to automate these things because it's a pain in the butt for them, right? There's things that we get an email and then we have to go do this. Let's cut out the middleman and take care of it for me while I'm sleeping in bed and something breaks, right? Um, so they are more, you know, flow chart designers. They're just trying to define the process that should be. And obviously process mining is a big thing these days. So as you improve your process, why not go ahead and automate that thing? You may have some level of coding experience to do that. Fantastic. You may have very minimal coding experience, um, but the difference would kind of be the business person or the admin who really all they're trying to do is choreograph. They're probably not altering templates all that much initially, right? The maker is probably, he could start with a template, but right away he's going to know this does not fit my needs perfectly because it's not just me. It's not just my junk I'm automating. There's a bunch of other people that have to um, have this work for them as well. And then finally, we have our architect. You, you got to love a guy with a hoodie and a bow tie on. Like, I, I wouldn't want to wear a bow tie with my hoodie either, but, you know, sometimes you got to pay these guys to do what you need them to do, right? They love coding uh, and they're going to be the professional RPA developers uh, in, in an automation space, right? They're going to be the hired guns at the enterprise level who are going to say, hmm, I need this department stuff to work and this department stuff and this department stuff and this department stuff and this department stuff. And, department stuff, and I need all these things to come together. And oh, by the way, uh, it has to perform and it has to be maintainable. And I might look at a template uh, to get an idea for what things 
uh, click application automation can do and what things are suggested as part of a flow. But that flow is going to be very highly personalized and it can get very intense. Um, as I make some of these videos, you're going to see that you could drag or drop into a makerspace and you might just say, hey, I want to set the name for this email and you set parameters that way. And it's just texts and labels, right? That's easy breezy, easy breezy. And then this guy is going to say, you know what? I, I've, I, I know how to work with JSON. Let me just slap a JSON package in there, right? And, and he's got the ability um, in application automation to just shove the package for the body that he wants um, because maybe he's building that elsewhere and has it. He doesn't need, you know, hand picking inputs and giving, you know, just numeric and text dollars, text labels to things. Um, as we look at the variables um, video uh, that I will be making, you will see we can have text variables, we can have numeric variables, and we can have lists, and we can have objects for object-oriented. Oh, boy. Behind the scenes, it's really building a giant JSON package of a package of a package. The, the architect knows that. The guy in the suit doesn't know that, right? But all, the, all they know um, is that as they're moving along this continuum, I want you to know they're moving and you're going to be moving as well. So these videos are intended to try to help you at any one of these levels, right? So don't get underwhelmed if you're the architect and I'm talking about some very, very basic stuff in one of my videos and do not get overwhelmed if you're more of the suit guy. Um, and I'm talking about objects and JSON. Um, I'm going to ensure that these videos have a combination of all of these things uh, for at least these three personas. Again, understanding, I completely realize that you and your role and the staff that you have available to you are going to be somewhere along this continuum of automation workers. Have a great day.